Welcome back to another Obsessed Auto Reviews, everybody. My name is Gary, and this is the place to be if you love vehicles. Now, today we're looking at this 2020 Honda CRV. We borrowed the CRV from Honda West of Calgary, Alberta. If you're looking for any Honda and you are in that area, please do visit them. Link is in the description below. Now, the CRV has been around in, since 1995, since I was born. This is in its fifth generation. Sixth one is going to be coming in maybe two to three years if you follow the typical Honda vehicle cycle. This one just went through its mid cycle refresh. Vehicles now, especially compact crossovers like these, get, are, they're probably the most popular segment in the entire market. Now, they're also getting more expensive, so we should be expecting more of these vehicles. Is this CRV Touring worth your above $40,000 price tag? Keep on watching to find out. Let's start off with the front end. The crazy thing about this fifth generation CRV is when it first came out, it had a much more boxier, more aggressive look, which I loved. The previous one was a lot more curvaceous, all in the right spots, we all love them. And this one has nice curves everywhere along the, the bodywork too, especially the hood, you can see it just drastic. This is an aggressive curb right here on both sides. It gives uh, some character for sure. Now, moving on to these headlights. The CRV's standard, they came in with a, uh, a combination headlight, so they would have LED daytime running lights and LED, uh, LED turn signals. Sorry, I'm too excited here. And then if you move on to the higher trims, though, you would get full LED headlight setups. So you, as you can see on this one, the Touring trim, you had the LED daytime running light, LED low beams, turn signals, and your high beams would be all LEDs. You even had LED fog lamps. These are very reminiscent of what Acura puts in their headlights, the jewel eye look. Um, they all had active shutter grills, every uh, Honda CRV trim level it did, even the standard ones. Um, moving on to the grill here. You can see it's all functional here, up here. There's a little opening here, I guess, for your hood latch, but everything else is covered. This is all functional. Down here, it is closed off, but at least they didn't pretend to be a fake grill by putting honeycomb down here. Now, almost every CRV had Honda Sensing standard. I say almost because the base trim doesn't have the lane watch, but everything above that, so the EX and above, came with Honda Sensing. So if that's important to you, maybe you start at the EX. If you don't give a something about uh, Honda Sensing, then hey, maybe the LX is the one for you. Now, let's move on to the side and the wheels and see what this brings. Moving on to the side profile here. Now. The standard LX CRV came with 17 inch wheels. They were a different design. The crazy thing is you had options of going to 18 inches with the EXL, or if you go with the Touring and above, you had 19 inch wheels. 19s on a CRV, who would have ever thought that day would have come? Now, if you uh, like gray wheels, that's what mainly your options are gonna be with the CRV. And let's see at the black edition, which I'm not sure if it'll be available in other markets. It is here in Canada though. Uh, but these CRVs, they were all riding on 235 series tires. They had just a little over eight inches of ground clearance. Some off-road capability, but let's be honest, who's really getting this grocery shopper off-road? Not too many people are. I, I don't think I would be either. Mainly because I don't do that. But anyways, moving on to the side. You had LED turn signal lamps indicators that were uh, integrated right into your side mirrors. Sleek, they looked decent. You had the silver trim all around. I'm not sure how I ever felt about these chrome strips. I think they look a little bit more tackier than add any luxury to the look of the vehicle. That's just my personal opinion though. If you like it, rock on. Uh, you had black cladding down here, which makes it look a little bit more rugged and off-road-ish. That same cladding goes all around the wheel arches as well. Now, let's take a look at the back. One thing that you, I've always noticed if you're driving one of these CRVs, when you look through your side mirrors on the, from the inside, you always notice how far these lights pop up and they give you a good visual indicator of how far, uh, how far back you're going, really. Um, let's move on to the back, take a look at the rear end and see what we got. All right, everybody, so moving on to the back end of the CRV. Let's, look at, let's take a look at these tail lights. You had a LED combination tail light. You had LED turn signals, brake lights. You had the LED strip for your night lights, and you had a halogen uh, turn or reverse. 
Um, one thing that Honda did after the mid-cycle refresh was they tinted out and made the rear tail lights even darker. I think they suit the vehicle really well and it looks really nice too. Now, you had things like the roof rail standard on higher trims. You had power tailgate standard on higher trims as well. If you go LX, you don't really get any of these things. So if they matter to you, maybe look at EXLs and up. If you don't care about them, LX is perfect for you. Um, as you can see, this one has functional exhaust tips here. LXs did not have any exhaust tips showing. It would basically be just this and then this would be non-existent. So if you need that, once again, take a look at what you want to look at, right? And since we're at the back, we're going to open up the cargo area and see how much junk you can put in the trunk. Now, with the seats up, you had about 39 cubic feet of storage. Once you put the second row seats down, you had over 70 cubic feet. That is a lot of space. The CRVs have been known to have quite a bit of space in, in their cargo capacity area. Uh, but that is crazy. You can lay these down and sleep in it comfortably if you get kicked out of your house, which hopefully you don't. But in case you do, your CRV's got your back. Let's go inside and see what we got. All right, everybody, we're back into the interior of the CRV. You know, the crazy thing is, let me lower the fan speed actually so you can hear me. Um, now, the crazy thing is, this is a huge improvement compared to the last generation of the CRV. You can tell it looks a lot more upscale, more luxurious. Everything looks much better. Um, let's start off with the door panels here. We had fake stitching along the top soft touch you had this wood grain material it's all matte finish you can see it scattered out the front everywhere um, it obviously isn't real feels uh, it doesn't look real either to be honest with you but it doesn't feel that bad either now since this is a touring you would have things like your leather stitched armrest and the door panel to be leather with genuine stitching you have automatic windows for your front passengers the rear would be manual uh, not manual sorry they're power but they're not automatic uh, and once again, this is a upper, upper trim level, so you have memory seats available, two different positions for the driver's side. You have your Honda sensing equipment down to the left side of the steering wheel over here. Now let's move on to the steering wheel. It's very nicely thick rimmed, leather wrapped, genuine stitching, some plastic, gloss black plastic down here, but it's okay, it's not too bad. You would have your steering wheel controls just to the left and right of the Honda badge here. Your Bluetooth, your media controls, your Honda Sensing Cruise Technologies and your heated steering wheel button. Now the heated steering wheel was only available on the Sport trims and up, LXs did not have it. So, so far it sounds like the Sport trim might be the best bang for buck trim level there is. Um, now you move on just above the steering wheel here, you have a digital display. You can see that, let me move the steering wheel, maybe you can see it a little better here. Hopefully that is better. Um, you have a display over here, roughly about seven inches. Uh, there's no analog gauges whatsoever in this interior. You have your digital tack, obviously you can see the needle move. You have a digital speedometer reading, no actual uh, dial. And then below that portion where the two lines are, you have a different variety of options available. This is your fuel range. If you want, you can switch it to your direction, uh, for your navigation direction compass. Uh, this coffee symbol, which says driver attention level, I think that's always a funny thing. I'm not sure how useful that is. Um, you can always check out how your uh, your wheels are spinning, which ones are spinning more, the front or the rear, kind of cool how it lets you do that. And just a bunch of other options you can basically see. Now, let's move on to the center stack here. This was a seven inch display. You had things like Android Auto, uh, Apple CarPlay standard. You had a backup camera standard as well. And it gave you three different viewing angles of uh, top down, wide, and a regular, regular view as well. A lot like phones. Now the cool thing about this is it has navigation because it is a uh, touring trim. Lower trims obviously didn't have this, but if you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you really don't really have to worry about not getting that, right? The only sad thing about the display is that it's a Honda Link system that is the older styled one. The new Accord one, much better, the Odyssey. Bring that onto the CRVs, please. I really hope you do, Honda. You had a volume knob. Now let's move on to the lower portion you have your engine start stop button. You know I gotta say it, hashtag save the knobs. You have rotary dials for your temperature select, automatic dual zone climate control for the Tourings at least. Uh, the higher trim levels obviously have way more than the lower equipped ones. Uh, one thing I don't like is the buttons for the fan speed. Up and down arrows, ah, they're okay. We'll get used to them. I would rather have a dial. The climate control, you have a little button here for climate control. I hate how you have to wait for the screen to pop up to turn your AC on and off and direct which way the air flows. 
I think that should be a simple button, uh, not having to wait for that to come up. Obviously, when it's colder, it's going to be a little bit more glitchy, um, but it is what it is. Now, you have your heated seat buttons right below here. Heated seats were standard on all CRVs. Cooled seats were not available. No matter how much you pay, you can't get them. Maybe you can custom fit them, but who wants to do that? Now, below that, you had your shift lever down here. Traditional look. CRVs always had a little popping out area here where, where your transmission selector is. You had automatic engine start slot button, your econ mode for better fuel economy, electronic parking brake, and your brake hold. Let's move on to the lower portion down here. You have a wireless car charger over here, obviously higher trim equipped only. Uh, base ones would just have a storage cubby. You have a couple USBs over here for your power cup holders, center stack here. You open this up, you have a wide variety of storage, slidable and flippable. You can have a lot of space and then if you want to hide something, you can put something down there and hide it. Uh, you had a 12 volt down here and that is really about it. Auxiliary cables barely exist in vehicles. Now, let's talk about the seats themselves. They're very nicely wrapped in leather, authentic stitching, neat design. They look, they are perforated, so maybe uh, cool seats are in the near future for Honda CRVs. Um, LXs came with pure fabric. They were okay. Sport trims had the leather bolstering and then fabric centers. Um, I think once again the sport seats did look pretty cool. I'm gonna set my seat now where I would be pretty comfortable. So I'm gonna go on a road trip. This is where I would be probably pretty comfortable at. I'm gonna move on to the back seat and see how much I like it. All right, we are in the back seats of the Honda CRV. Now, I know I was gonna be back there, but guess what? I'm over here now. I teleported. Man, I am so comfortable right now. I can sleep right now. And the seats are pretty far back. Both of them are in the same uh, adjustment setting here. And I, I'm, I'm really comfortable, man. You have these nice full leather seats to look at, the leather backs. You have a pocket over here. You have a couple USBs for your accessory, uh, for your chargers, whatever you want to plug in for your devices. You have a couple air vents that you can direct for AC and heat because rear passengers matter too, right? Um, moving on to the door panel. Hard touch plastic, imitation stitching. You have that same wood trim, uh, silver accented door handle. Genuine leather stitching on the armrest and the door panel leather, which is nice to see. You had a couple speaker areas which look nice cup holder area on your door panel in the lower portion and a little bit of storage not the most but it is what it is now look at me man i have so much headroom this gigantic panel roof lets in a lot of light you can look up and just go stargazing and do whatever you want basically um i have a lot of leg room a lot of headroom probably at least a couple inches my knees with so much space i have maybe half a foot and over uh in front of me above my knees here uh, my feet go a little bit into uh, underneath the front seat, but plenty of space as well. Uh, let's pull down this center armrest, couple cup holders. I wish they were vertically, uh, sorry, horizontally placed instead, uh, but super soft, leather stitch. The seats themselves are super comfy. The cool thing about the touring level CRVs, now if you get lower trims, you're not gonna have this, but if you get a touring and above, you have these LED lights as well, which is usually reserved for higher and luxury vehicles really but you have it on a crv but since they're also paying over forty thousand dollars we better have gotten it and honda delivered with that so um other than that not really too much to talk about i'm gonna go to sleep i'm gonna let benji do the driving we're gonna go for the drive test and see how fun this would be to drive obviously it's not a performance vehicle you're not really meant to have too much fun with it but um we are going to go for a drive and just see how comfortable it is and we'll also show you a little bit of the engine bay as well all right, everybody, we are underneath the hood of this Honda CRV. Now, if you want a wide variety of options, too bad, you're not gonna get them. What you are gonna get, however, is a 1.5 liter turbo, four cylinder, super small. CRVs always used to have 2.4 liter four cylinder naturally aspirated engines, but not these ones. I'm sorry with all these hand gestures, man. There's too many bugs all around. Um, now, this 1.5 turbo made 190 horsepower and 179 pound-feet of torque made it only to a CVT transmission. That's all you had. Once again, not the biggest fan of CVTs. They are getting better, but I wish it had a normal shifting automatic transmission. Um, the front wheel drive was standard on LXs. They had an optional all wheel drive. On higher trims, you can get all wheel drive standard on all the other ones. Now this can tow up to a maximum of 1500 pounds. I wouldn't do that much either. Just with the 1.5 four cylinder, it is pushing it. 
The turbo is great. It's a recommended regular fuel, which is great. You don't have to put premium in there because it is uh, a turbo. But other than that, I wish we had more. Let's make a CRV Type R one day. Why not? Let's go for a drive. So the biggest question you probably have is, hey, you know what? If I'm going to pay $42,000 for a Honda CRV in 2020, and I have so many options and great competitors, what's so special about it? Why should I get this? Well, I don't know why you want to get it. You're going to get it, obviously, because it's one of your preferences. Typically, a lot of people associate Honda with reliability. Um, you have your typical warranty periods, so that can be one thing, the Honda quality, um, the Honda functionality, right? Hondas have been in the family for a long time for a lot of people. Is it a fun drive? I'm not too sure if I would say it'd be a fun drive. I'm gonna stop at the stop sign here and give you a little acceleration test and see if it's anything special. I really would say it isn't, but for those of you interested, full throttle. And we just got to 60 kilometers an hour after all that hype. <laughs> so it definitely isn't fast. Once again, 190 horsepower for a vehicle this size and weight. Um, it's not anything too special. But what it is though is comfortable, which people get SUVs here, at least in Canada, because of the winter season gets, you know, you want all wheel drive. You want something that you can fit yourself in comfortably and the kids, and you want some storage in the back. And that is definitely what the CRV gives you along with great residual value as well. Now, are there better competitors out there? 100%. I wouldn't say better, but I would say there's definitely some competitors that beats the CRV in certain things, and then the CRV beats uh, those competitors in other things. So there's a lot of great options out there. The RAV4, uh, the Nissan Rogue, the new one coming out is gonna look very promising. Um, you have the Hyundai Tucson, the Kia Sportage, right? So you have a lot of options. You really gotta know why you pick a CRV. Now it takes turns, okay, um, your turn, you, you have your little bit of body roll going on. The steering wheel feels fairly active. It is an electric power assist, so you don't have any hydraulic power steering pump in here. Um, road noise it is noticeable, unless you wanna pay at least $10,000 more to upgrade into the luxury segment. I would say that it is bearable, maybe get some undercoating, whatever you want. Um, but it's comfortable, all wheel drive, decent interior features, upscale enough. I think it justifies it. Um, worst case scenario, you, uh, worst case scenario, you might want to pick up a used one in case the new one is too much money for you. The only thing with Hondas, at least, is that I guess a downside and an upside. If you are a current owner, the upside is that it has great residual value. The downside is if you're not a current owner, it has great residual value. So that means you're going to be paying more than uh, the competitors, usually based on the kilometers and, and age, obviously. So uh, once again, it's a great vehicle. I, I would definitely, you know, have this in your test drive list along with the competitors that you're going to be looking at. Um, but other than that, we hope you really enjoyed this review. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, hit a thumbs up button, let us know what you think of the CRV, and if you want to have want to have any other vehicles looked at by us, request a vehicle. Let us know what you want to know in the comments there. Other than that, help have yourself a great day enjoy your weekend or whatever day you're looking at this man have a great morning evening afternoon night whenever you're looking at this we hope you have a great one we will catch you on the next video peace